I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let's give God a hand of praise this morning. He is good. He is so good. God is so good to us. Amen. Please stand, those who can, for our call to worship. Psalms 108, verses 1 through 5 in the King James Translation. After it, we will have a selection from our youth choir and then a morning prayer from our youth. Um, let them come on in. Come on in, please. Let us begin. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Even my son.
everyone bow their heads. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us here this morning, waking everybody up this morning, and those who couldn't wake, bless their hearts. Thank you for everybody that's here for us today. Thank you for everybody that's not. Thank you for the things you do for us all. Bless the people in places they should and should not be right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You say you are my sheep, why aren't you following me? You say I am your shepherd, why aren't you following me? When my sheep hear my voice, they come running to me running to me and you say I am your shepherd why aren't you following me When my sheep hear my voice, they come running to me, running to me. When my sheep hear my voice, they come running to me, running to me. When my sheep hear my voice, they come running to me, running to me. Wonderful. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. And who was who was leading that song? Ooh, yes. Didn't she do a wonderful job with that? Amen. All right. Heavenly Father, we know that your spirit does the work, your spirit produces the fruit. And so we continue to pray that your spirit, your spirit will teach us, and not only teach us, but transform us into the image of Christ as we open your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now they got the wrong sermon up there. I don't I'm sure they'll work on that, but we're this morning I want to talk about when you don't know what to do. Uh, anybody ever been in a situation where you just didn't know what to do? Matter of fact, after over 40 years in ministry, this text this morning is by far the scripture in the Bible that has helped me the most in my life, in my dark times, in my challenges, when I just didn't know what to do. This scripture that we'll touch on this morning has helped me more times than I can count when things just happen out of the blue. Caught me by surprise. Caught me off guard. And I just didn't know what to do. Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning at verse 12. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. What do you do when you just don't know what to do? What do you do when you're caught off guard, surprised by life's surprises? This happened to King Jehoshaphat, the king of the southern kingdom. Jehoshaphat woke up one morning and he received news that a massive army had gathered against him. Jehoshaphat knew that there were more against him than there were for him. And when he looked at the odds, he knew the odds were not in his favor. Have you ever been where the odds were just against you? Have you ever been in a place where you were expected to lose? Have you ever been in a situation where certainly you were not expected to come out on top? 
Well, King Jehoshaphat, he models for us what I love about the word of God is for anything, any situation or circumstance or challenge that we may ever face in our life, if you search the scripture, if you read the word of God, you will find somebody has already faced it and God has already shown up in that somebody's life and that same God will show up in your life. God will do it. Won't God do it? God, listen, God will do it again and again and again and again. And so, Jehoshaphat, watch this, prayed. That's what he did. Verse 20 says, oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? So much goes wrong in the world. And you know what? We have the most powerful tool on the face of the earth. It's not a nuclear weapon. It's not some new uh, 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 gun or, 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 or uh, anything like that. But it is the power of prayer. Oh, our God. When he looked and he saw this massive army against him, he didn't see in a way he could win in the situation. He turned to the God that's over every situation and he called him by name, oh, our God. What did he do? He did, listen, he did three things. And these same three things, that Jehoshaphat did, you and I can do the exact same three things whenever we just don't know what to do. First of all, acknowledge your limitations. Acknowledge your, your limitations. Uh, uh, someone has said that Man's limitations are simply God's opportunities. But we have to acknowledge our limitations. God loves it when we come to him and we let him know, Lord, I can't handle this. God loves it when we're truthful and just, just you know, turn away from arrogance and, 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 you know, just say to the Lord, Lord, this is so much bigger than me. He loves it when we talk to him. That's what prayer is, talking to God. When, when we talk to God and say, you know what, Lord, if you don't help me, I won't make it. Oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? Jehoshaphat said, he, he said, for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Listen, yeah, there it is right there. He acknowledged his limitation. He was the king, but he was limited. Yeah. Wow. He was ruler over the nation, but he had limitations. He had an army, but he was still limited. He had silver. He had gold. He had resources, but he was still limited. And listen, you can have some everything the world offers and still come up against a situation where you have limits. Oh, our God. Wilt thou not judge them? We have no might against this great company that comes against us. And listen what he says to God. Neither know we what to do. I have counselors. I have people around me who are supposed to advise me. But the king said, I've checked in with them. We don't know what to do. When you come up against 
a situation, a circumstance, whatever happens in your life, listen, where you just don't know what to do, the first thing you do is call on the God of heaven, call on the God who never fails, and let him know, I don't know what to do. Acknowledge your limitation. And then the second thing he did was he focused on the Father. He said, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Yeah. You know, his eyes could have stayed on the army that was coming against him. His eyes could have focused on the people who were around him. No doubt everybody had an idea about what he ought to be doing. And there are a lot of times in our life where everybody else will know what we ought to be doing except us. Do I have a church? But he said, Lord, my eyes are upon thee. He focused on the Father. And in this world that we're living in, the world will, listen, try to Gather your attention. The world will call for your attention. The world will at times demand your attention by sending situations and circumstances, dark times and challenging times when you are so caught up in what's going on that you don't remember that you've got, watch this, a relationship with the person who created the world. You have a relationship with the person who created the sun, the moon, the stars, and all that's in the universe. And so Jehoshaphat focused on the Father. And you and I can focus on the Father. Sometimes you just need to go somewhere by yourself Get into a private place by yourself and shut out everybody else. Shut out everything else. Turn the television off. Turn the radio off. Turn your iPod off. Turn your computer off. Get off the internet. Find a quiet place and focus on the Father. You know how you begin to focus on the Father? You begin by acknowledging who he is. You begin by acknowledging, oh God, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You, you are the God of my mama and my grandma, my granddaddy, you, my great granddaddy. You are the God who brought us where we are right now. You, you are the God who is so loving and, and, and kind. You are the God of mercy, grace, and, and favor. And I love you because I know you first loved me. Focus on the Father. It's all right. I know God doesn't need any reminding, but it's all right to say, Lord, I know you the God that was in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I know you the God who was in the lion's den. Yes, sir, with Daniel. I know you the God who showed up when David faced his Goliath, and I know you the same God that can help me today. You, you can pick me up. You can. He focus on the Father. Listen, listen, listen. Once he acknowledge his limitations, and once he focused on the Father, God sent word to him. Uh, you you got to get this. Got to get this now, because uh, a whole lot of folk are come to you talking about the Lord told me to tell you. <laughs> Lord told me to tell you, you supposed to be, you know, they, they, and, and and that can get confusing. But but when God sends word, yeah. do I have a church? Yeah. When God sends word, it will come from a godly person. I know I'm right about it because 
verse 14 uh, is when God sent word. Uh, 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 Jehoshaphat has acknowledged his limitations. He's, he's focused on the Father. And while he's still focused, God sends word. Now, now watch this. Listen to it again. Then. then. See, that, that's an adverb of time. See, he didn't get the message until then. And he didn't get the message until he acknowledged his limitations. He focused on the Father and then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah. We say, well, that's good enough. No, no, the son of uh, Benaiah. That, that, that's great. That's good. No, the son of Jael. That, that's plenty. No, 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 no. The son of Mathaniah. Well, that, that's, a, that's a good bloodline. I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. No, a Levite of the sons of Asaph came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Now, this brother showed up with a resume of a whole land of godly people who are connected to God and God sent a message through a godly person and gave him a resume to let Jehoshaphat know you can trust this word. <laughs> and the reason you can trust this word is because the spirit of the Lord came upon him in the midst of the congregation and, 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 and know what? He, he spoke what God said and, and he said, hearken ye all Jerusalem and ye inhabitants of, Ju of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat thus saith the Lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You acknowledge your limitations, you focus on the Father, and know that the battle belongs to God. God can win this battle. You can't, but God can. You know what he told him? He said, now, this is what the Lord wants you to do. You will not have to fight in this battle, but you will have to show up. Do I have a church? See, some of us, we don't get where we need to be with God because we fail to show up. And so he said, I want you to, tomorrow morning, gather everybody, go down to the valley, put all the singers out in front. Bring the choir and let the choir go out in front of the army. You, you, you ever seen a choir in front of an army? That's because the army never needed to draw a sword. And, and, and so they went out, they saw all of these soldiers, this massive army. You know what they started doing? They started singing praises to God. Oh, I wish I had somebody. They saw all these odds against them, and they just started, I don't know what they sung, but if I was there, I, would, I probably would have sung, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> I, I wasn't there, but if I, if I was there, I probably would have sung, he's about life in the time, of, he's about life in the time. I wasn't there, but 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 if 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 I was there, I probably would have sung if it had not been for the Tell me where would I Oh tell me where Now watch this when when they started singing and praising God. You, you know what praise does? Praise takes your mind off your problems. Yeah. Yeah, when, when, you, when you get into praise, your, your mind is elevated above your problems. And, and so when they started praising God, their minds were elevated above their problems and God responded. Oh. Praise will move God and, 
and, and when they started praising God, the, the text says God set an ambush against the enemy. I wish you would read this text. It's, it's helped me so many times, and I've seen it come true in my life so many times. You know what God did when he set the, the ambush? Uh, he, God caused them to turn on each other. <laughs> The enemy showed up to fight Jehoshaphat, and they ended up fighting each other. And they destroyed each other. And so when Jehoshaphat got to where the battle was, there was no one to fight. All that was left was the spoil. Now watch this. When they started walking through, they saw Jews, silver, Gold, jade, precious stones, all types of, of Neiman Marcus stuff. <laughs> and they just started gathering. And for, for, for three days, they went on a, a shopping spree that didn't cost a penny. They just gathered and gathered and gathered and gathered. Listen. All because he acknowledged his limitations. He focused on the Father. And he knew that this battle belongs to God. And so what do you do when you don't know what to do? I encourage you to do the same thing and you will get those kind of results. I've seen in my own life so many times when God has caused my enemy to fight each other. And I had sense enough not to get cocky. And even when I had the opportunity to do a get you back, because God has placed some enemies under my feet. And when I had the opportunity to stump, I had the good sense to praise God and to thank God and to acknowledge God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. And, and I showed kindness to the enemy because God is just so good. Maybe you're here today having heard this gospel and you're saying to yourself, how shall I respond? Well, do just like Jehoshaphat did. That's what I've been doing. But no, 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 on a deeper level, to know God, to relate to him, you've got to come by way of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on a cross, paid our sin debt. And when you, listen, give it all to him, receive him as your savior, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful life. You will begin. I'm not saying it'll be easy. I'm not saying you won't have midnights. But God will be there. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And so I say to you today, if you have not received him as Savior, you can do so in just a moment. We'll give you an opportunity to walk forward. We have counselors who will help you make that decision and maybe you here you know Christ as Savior but you're not connected to a local church a place where the gifts and abilities he pours into you when he saves you can overflow in ministry to others and if that's if that's you as we stand will you come will you come today will you come will you come What God can do, what he 
Christ on for all us. He'll do for you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Uh, our offertory boxes are located all around the sanctuary for your use. At this time, we'll have our offertory prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're here today and this is your first time and you don't mind just giving us a wave, we'll know you're a first timer. We'll do our best to make you feel welcome. Any first timers? All right. Well, then, um, we have a thank you card from Deacon Davis. He's back with us, He's back on his post back there. Your thoughtfulness was appreciated more than you can know. Thank you. Deacon Davis told me that the doctors didn't make him a new man, but they made him a better man. All right. I say, we go on, Deke. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, also we are continuing in prayer for different ones and some of the names who are called Joseph Parker, Dolores Griffin, Dolores uh, Johnson, Ann Pinkston, Myrna Miles, and others we may not uh, be aware of or know about. Let's continue to pray one for another. Oh, our God. And then just talk to him. Just like you talk to a friend. Amen. Uh, in the way of announcements, uh, a continual reminder uh, to uh, uh, don't lower your God when it comes to COVID-19 protocols. Uh, we're just not out of that yet, and don't know if we ever will uh, get out of it, but whatever it is, it is. It's not greater than our God, is it? Amen. So look at how God has blessed us, and so we are still here. And so uh, I want you to also know, uh, I'll remind you that our HVAC system that, you know, the a AC and heating and all of that, when we uh, did our re remodeling, uh, they added this uh, infrared, uh, infrared system that uh, purifies the air before it's recirculated. So the air goes into that system and any of those microbes, all that bad stuff is killed and, and filtered and then the air is circulated back into the building. Just an added precaution. But our faith is in God. Yeah. Not in the system. Our faith is in God. He's the one who keeps us. And uh, having said that, we'll ask Reverend Collier to come. Reverend Collier preached a wonderful message at 8 o'clock. He said, the other side of midnight. Right. Let's give God another hand to praise for our pastor. He's my pastor, and he's my brother and my friend, and I thank God for him every day. Amen. God is a great God. Uh, 
let us go before his throne. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you bless us in more ways than we can count. Lord, we lift up the names that were spoken and names that we have omitted uh, without cause. We just don't, don't know them all, but you do, Father. And Father, we pray for every family, house by house and name by name. And Father, we just ask that you continue to bless us, Lord God, that you cover us, Lord God. And uh, Father, you just, uh, just take care of us, Lord God, and we acknowledge, Lord, who you are. You're God and you're God alone. Father, continue to guide us on the right path, Lord God. Give us wisdom and knowledge, Lord God, to always follow you. Father, we lift up, Lord, our children and all our families, Lord, that we seek you, Lord, and seek your face. Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, Pastor Jacobs and his family. Thank you, Lord, for all the wisdom he endows in us, Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, what's going on here at New Covenant, that we're seeking you, Lord God, in your word. We lift up this nation and this world. Father, we pray, Lord, uh, that this COVID and all the other things that are happening in, uh, in this world, Lord, that we find an end to it in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for every house. And we ask it all, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, and many and power both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be safe as you leave and as you depart. And um, be mindful of each other. God bless you and be safe. Thank you.